first tried mixed reality a few years ago, I thought the possibility was unlimited. I tried scanning my room, but it didn't work. I tried manually creating things. They would disappear. After spending 30 minutes with no success, I gave up. The tools just weren't mature enough at that point in time. With our new mixed reality tools, we remove the friction from developing an MR. If you are one of those developers who see the possibility of mixed reality, but are either intimidated by it or just haven't gotten the chance to explore it, now is the time. We are going to introduce tools in this presentation that make it easy for you to get started creating amazing apps in mixed reality. Our goal in providing tools, including the MR Utility Kit, is to make it easy for virtual objects to exist and interact in your natural world. As you see in this video, the virtual robot is walking around the room, and when it encounters the wall, it adjusts and starts to climb the wall. Notice how well it blends into the natural environment with the lighting and the shadows. But more than just making it possible, we want to make it easy. The MR Utility Kit bundles capabilities that are commonly needed by devs and makes mixed reality accessible for all developers, regardless of their size or experience. Okay, let's get started and build something. Hopefully you have a bit of familiarity with VR development, but if not, there's a tutorial that is shown at the link below the image. To get the samples, you want to add three packages that are shown on this screen. After adding the packages, move to the Sample tab and click Import to bring in the pass-through relighting scene and the bouncing ball scenes. We'll use these samples to pick up some assets. After installing the packages on the previous slide, you now have access to the Project Setup tool. With one click, you can find most configuration issues in your project. If we had a Most Valuable Tool Award, the Project Setup tool would win it. With one click, you can find the configuration issues in your project. Even better, you can fix most of the issues simply by clicking Fix All and Apply All. This tool speeds development time in MR and reduces errors. One helpful way to get started in a project is to use the Meta Building Blocks tool. It allows you to easily discover and add different features to your project. We're going to start this project by clicking to add the Effects Mesh, Pass Through, and a Grab Interaction. One of the really cool things about the building blocks is that they automatically add the dependencies. Notice in our case, it added the camera rig, even though we didn't explicitly select it. Now, let's go through a few of the objects in the white box on the upper left. You will see the familiar OVR camera rig, which is used for all VR projects. MRUK is a singleton on the next row that provides us with information about the room and the objects in it. We can also use it to make queries like, which surface is the biggest? What is the closest surface to the player? Or select all the objects of a particular type, like a table. MRUK comes with a feature called world locking that makes it easy for developers to keep the virtual world in sync with the physical world. Virtual content can be placed arbitrarily in the scene without explicitly attaching it to anchors. The item below MRUK is the effect mesh. It is critical for adding colliders and materials to visualize the scene. The next item is the OVR pass-through layer that's used to enable pass-through. Finally, we have the cube added by the grab interaction building block, which we will use later in our gameplay. In order to understand the MRUK singleton, I'd like to take a step back. What does it take to build an MR app? The Scene API provides an interface that allows basic scene understanding. You can assign labels and locations to objects. However, this is still a pretty low-level abstraction. A developer wanting to place a virtual object somewhere in the room needs to find the best place for putting that object. But qualifying best might mean the orientation of the object, how close it is to the player, or how much surface area is needed. You could place paintings on virtual surfaces like walls while hanging virtual lights from the ceiling. Or maybe you want to place an object but aren't sure there's enough space. Developers need a helper that allows them to easily answer these questions. Devs also need to create gameplay that works on all the user's rooms. By using flexible queries and testing on a wide range of predefined rooms provided by MRUK, the developer can gain confidence that their game will scale to lots of rooms. MRUK also provides a set of tools that allows you to do things like make spatial queries, spawn objects, or restyle the room. You can even test your applications. 
The effect mesh allows us to visualize the scene by providing materials and effects. Notice in the upper image, the blocks from a normal scan are uneven, and they're all of different sizes. The lower image shows an evenly scaled texture using the effect mesh. This allows the textures to wrap smoothly around rooms without any seams, stretching, or deformation. Now, let's fix up the cube a bit. We will change the name to Crate. We will change the default material to a Crate material, just to make it look a little better. Next, we will uncheck the Is Trigger in the Box Collider so that it won't pass through the floor. And in the Rigid Body, we will select Use Gravity and unselect Is Kinematic. Let's add a few more assets. Open the pass-through relighting scene from the sample we imported earlier. We will copy OP and the flame standard material into the new scene. The candle is a light emitter, so we will use it to show shadows and lighting. After doing this, you will need to set up the anchor points to the eye center anchor and the attraction point of the candle so that the candle follows OP around the room. Now we will do the same thing to copy the bouncing ball manager from the bouncing ball scene that we imported in the second sample. We will use this to shoot balls around the room to see how they interact with the real world. After copying the bouncing ball manager, we will need to set up the transforms to the tracking space and place it on the right controller, where the grab button will trigger shooting the ball. Now let's spawn some crates in the room. The power of this feature is almost magical since it allows you to selectively create any number of objects wherever you want. After creating a game object called Crate Spawn, we will go to the inspector and add the Find Spawn Position script. We will drag the prefab of the crate we created earlier and assign it to the spawn object. We will set up to spawn 30 crates on top of surfaces. Note that we could have hung them from the ceiling or placed them on the walls. Finally, we will select the filter to spawn only on tables. Now, let's go back to the MRUK component. We will drag in OP and have him respawn when the room is created. Now that the scene is set up, I'd like to introduce the Meta XR Simulator. It makes day-to-day -day development easier by simulating rooms and enabling testing and debugging of apps from the convenience of your computer without ever donning the headset. You can load synthetic rooms that simulate the room's pass-through scene and anchor information. These maps are captured and rendered in a photorealistic way so that you can be immersed with a realistic environment while iterating on your gameplay. Since we're using XRSim, we select the computer icon at the top of the screen and start XRSim server and then press play. The synthetic room is spawned. We have a data forward server running on our Quest device, so we'll connect to the physical controllers. But you can also use the keyboard mapping directly to control OP without using your headset at all. As we move OP around, you can see that the light from the candle reflects on the floor as well as the couch and the other objects. You will also notice the shadow he cast. Also, notice the spawn crates that have appeared on the table to the right. Opie is very happy. We're going to add one more manager to the scene, which we'll call the PT Lighting Manager. This allows us to control the pass-through brightness for the demo. When a button is pressed, we will slowly decrease it from 0 to minus 1 and then wrap back around. The range is minus 1 to 1, but anything above zero oversaturates the scene, which is an effect we really don't want in this particular scene. There's a code snippet on the slide showing the implementation. Note the serialized fills at the start of the mono behavior. They export both the light button and the pass-through layer. To set up the scene, you will need to choose the button you want to use and drag the pass-through layer created in the building blocks in your scene onto this field. Now, let's pull it all together and try it in a physical room. In this video, we chose the standard Unity Occlusion shader and the effect mesh, and then replaced it about halfway through with the default shader to show you the lighting effects. First, I'm going to use the ball shooter and show you the collisions. Notice the balls bounce off the ceiling, walls, and furniture. They even bounce off the crates, which are virtual objects, not physical, that we spawned on the table. Also notice, as they go to the other side of the furniture, they are occluded. As Opie walks behind the table, he also is occluded by the real-world object. Since we use the grabbable object, I can now pick up the crates and throw them around the room. Note that as they drop behind the table, they are also occluded. At this point, we've loaded the default shaders. We will dim the pass-through lighting and have Opie walk back and forth. Notice the reflection of the light that he is carrying reflect on the nearby surfaces. Also, notice the shadow he is casting. 
What we showed you in this short demo is only part of the picture. MRUK comes with sample scenes that let you automatically create a nav mesh in your room so that you can allow non-playable characters to wander around your room. You can also place objects with ray casting or even create and destroy virtual walls. You can find links on this slide to find more information and download MRUK. As you can see, MRUK comes with a variety of amazing features. I started off this presentation describing how developing for MR was initially frustrating for me because the tools weren't mature. While we can always improve, the tools we've provided now dramatically simplify the MR development. I hope you are encouraged and will jump into the MR development pool with us and develop some great apps. Thank you.